Hey there lovelies, my name is Mumta and welcome to my channel Geek Glitz in which I talk about all things geek and all things glitz. I make mainly Harry Potter videos so feel free to browse through my channel to check out some of my past videos and make sure to hit that subscribe button if you like what you see. So today I've got a really fun DIY project. I decided to make my very own Harry Potter themed pin board as I am Harry Potter pin obsessed. So I had this idea to repurpose one of my old picture frames get some cork painted and then make my own pin board. So here is what the finished board looks like and I am really pleased with how it turned out. And if you guys wanted to make this or something similar, I thought I would go ahead and film my process so that you guys can follow along. So here we go. Let me start with the materials we need for this project. First of all, I have this black picture frame that has seven slots. I've gone ahead and removed the glass for the frame as I won't need it and I decided it would be great to have a Hogwarts themed design in the center, then some Hogwarts house themed designs on the corners, and then the top could have some sort of magical design while the bottom could have a Honeydukes themed design. So then I got some cork from my local stationery shop, which is pretty thick and perfect for putting pins through. I also got a cutting mat so that I don't ruin my table with paint and cuts as I work on the project, and then I've got a ruler, pen knife, and pencil. I've got some painting supplies like palettes, paint brushes, sponge brushes, painter's tape, or in my case, masking tape. And then I also have a whole load of acrylic color paints in various colors. And finally, some double-sided foam tape, regular double-sided tape, an acrylic gold paint pen, scissors, and that's it. So the first step is to measure the picture slots in the frame with a ruler. Next, I use a pencil and ruler to mark out those picture slot dimensions on the cork. And then I used a pen knife to cut out the cork according to the size I measured. And then I also used the pen knife to cut away any excess cork from the edges. It's a good idea to test the cork slabs inside the frame slots to make sure they fit well. So I continued measuring and cutting up the cork until I had all seven cork slabs for my picture frame. So before I started painting the actual cork slabs, I tested out the paint on some sample cork pieces. It's a good idea to do this to get an idea of how the paint looks like on your cork, how long the drying time is for the paint, and how different colors look layered on top of each other. It's also a good idea to try a pin out on this painted cork slab to check whether any of the paint gets on the back of it. Doing this step will help you going forward for the rest of the project as you will get a feel for your paints and cork. So now I'm going to start working on the designs for the house themed cork slabs. So for the painting step, you need paint, paint brushes, sponge brushes, a palette, scrap paper, the cork slabs, and some water in a cup. Since I'm working on Hogwarts house themed designs, the paints I use are the house colors red, blue, green, and yellow. So this design starts off pretty simple. I use a sponge brush to paint each of the cork slabs in the house colors, and then I left it to dry for a couple of hours. The good thing about acrylic paint is that it dries pretty fast. Next, I want to add in some gold stripes on my Gryffindor themed cork slab, so I'll use some gold paint. And I'll use some masking tape to make some diagonal striped open areas on the cork, which I want painted gold. Painter's tape could be used for this step as well. And make sure to press the tape down really well, so that no paint gets under the tape. Then, I'm painting the uncovered areas in gold with my paintbrush. So I'm going to repeat the same process of marking out the striped areas with masking tape for the other house colors, and I'll use silver paint for the Slytherin and Ravenclaw boards. And then I'm going with black paint for the stripes on the Hufflepuff board. So after the stripes are dry comes my favorite part. I get to remove the masking tape and see the results of the striped house patterns. So 
Since there were some areas where the paint leaked under the tape and some jagged lines, I use my paintbrush to touch up those areas until I'm happy with the way it looks. So here we have all four of the completed Hogwarts house cork slabs, which I based on the house carf patterns. So next, I've got another cork slab, which I'm going with a magical theme for. So I'm going to start off by painting it purple, since that seems like a pretty magical color. I love using the sponge brushes for painting the background because it really evenly spreads the color across the slab and really feels like I can get into the pores of the cork. And next I'm using a gold acrylic paint pen to draw some stars on the board. You can use a paintbrush to draw out the stars, but my skills to draw out stars with a paintbrush are not so great, so a paint pen worked well for me. The final result is a pretty purple slab with some gold stars, which I think looks magical. And next, I'm doing a Honeydukes themed cork slab, so I'm starting off by using the masking tape to mark out even vertical stripes for the Honeydukes colors. So I've marked out the areas I want green, and then I'm using light green paint to fill in those stripes. And then once those stripes are dry, I'm removing the masking tape and applying some new tape to mark out the areas I want pink. And then I'm using the pink paint to paint in those areas. My tape width was larger than the width of the green stripes, so I had to tape up certain areas in stages in order to make sure I could paint all the areas on the slab that I wanted to be pink. And again comes my favorite step, to remove the tape and reveal the alternating pink and green stripes. And then I use my paintbrush to touch up any jagged paint areas again. So I'm quite pleased with the final pink and green Honeydukes themed cork. Now finally, I've got the center slab to paint and I'm using a large sponge brush and gold paint to cover up the entire slab. And then I decided to get a bit creative. So I found a sorting hat silhouette PNG file online and printed it and cut it up with scissors. Then I got another piece of paper and painted it black and my idea was to use the sorting hat I had cut out as a stamp and this black painted paper as an ink pad in a way. So I put the back of the sorting hat cut out on the black paint and then I stamped it on the center of the gold cork slab. After pressing the sorting hat down, I pulled it off and was left with a partially stamped imprint of the sorting hat on the cork but there were a lot of areas that needed to be filled in. The main issue I immediately noticed was that a lot of the paper had stuck onto the board because the paper was too thin. I had used regular A4 sized printing paper. So I went ahead and picked out all the stuck paper and then used a paintbrush to paint the remaining areas of the sorting hat imprint in black. If you were to try this step, I would recommend either printing the sorting hat on a thicker piece of paper so that when it's wet with the black paint, it doesn't get too damp nor does it tear as easily. Or alternatively, you can cut out the sorting hat and then trace it onto the cork board with a pencil and then just use paint to fill in your traced area. So you would essentially bypass the whole stamping part if you went with this method. But anyway, after I completed painting the sorting hat in black, I think this board still turned out pretty well. So here are all seven of the painted cork slabs ready to be placed inside the frame. So now I've got some double-sided foam tape that I cut up in strips. I used three strips per slab and taped one side of each strip to the back of the cork slab evenly. And then I removed the tape cover and stuck the other side down inside the frame and pressed down so it fit in well. I repeated this process for each of the cork slabs. And you don't have to use tape for this step. You could also go with your choice of glue or a glue gun, whatever you prefer for sticking the cork down. And then finally, I had one last step where I used some Harry Potter themed magnets and some double-sided tape to 
cover up some holes in my frame. I had 8 of these holes and they are particular to this frame design, so you probably won't need this step, but it's still something you can think about if you wanted to add embellishments of some sort around your frame border. So I basically cut up the regular double-sided tape into small strips to cover up the back of each magnet. This tape is thin, not thick like the double-sided foam tape from before. Then I removed the tape cover and pressed each of the magnets down on the frame border to cover up the holes. And here is my final frame result, which I am absolutely in love with. I love how it all turned out and I can't wait to place some pins on this board. I plan to put some house themed pins on each of the Hogwarts house slabs, Hogwarts themed pins in the center, character pins on the purple slab, and then Honeyduke's pins on the Honeyduke slab. So that is it. I hope you found this DIY Harry Potter themed painted corkboard tutorial helpful. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of this board and tutorial and if you have any questions. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and please subscribe to my channel Geek Glitz for more things geek and more things glitz as I make videos every Friday. And feel free to connect with me on any of my social media. I've listed them all below in the description. I've got a Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, so come say hello as I love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching, lovelies. See you in the next video. Bye!